Hello transport nerds and welcome back to Talking Planning. When it comes to reducing emissions, it's taken us a little bit of time for electric bus technology to shine in Australia. And despite the recent surge in deliveries of electric buses across Sydney, just a couple of years ago, diesel was still the predominant choice. Transit Systems has been leading this charge and now operates a pretty sizeable fleet of BYD and Utong electric buses. And of course, other Sydney-based operators like Transdev, Interline, Busabout and Punchbowl have battery electric buses in operation today. But before we go and have a closer look at today's bus, I wanted to talk about some of the other late model diesel buses that Transit Systems has, including Scania K320UBs with custom coaches or precision VST bodies that directly precede the latest electric models. But I'm also checking out something else from this time period of the diesel powertrain type. My chariot today is 8080, an August 2020 build Mercedes-Benz 0500 LE with a Volgren Optimus body. Seen here on a grey December day on L1 light rail replacement, this was during the time period between tram services being suspended on the L1 line due to cracking being discovered in the welds of many of their trams and the Alstom Citadus 305s being deployed on the line. Fortunately, in the meantime, a comprehensive light rail replacement bus network was set up to keep people moving. Transit Systems was the predominant operator of light rail replacement buses, and on my short trip to Sydney, I spotted a number of their vehicles helping out. And of course, these 0500 LEs are also regular sites across the normal route service network of Sydney. Being ordered and specced by Transit Systems, these 0500 LEs come with the typical squiggly line seat pattern seen on many of the buses they've ordered new or refurbished. As with most Optimus products, the LED strip lighting leads to a light and airy interior feel. Although compared to many other Optimus, Optimi, Optimuses, I don't know which one's correct, but there aren't any USB charge ports or other key mod cons here. Although there is an internal information screen, but there were no route details on display today. The bench seats fitted here are pretty comfortable, and there's the other benefit of having extra stop bells mounted on the pillars, and that's really handy if you're sitting near the window and you need to request a stop on a busy bus. Speaking of a full bus, does this vehicle have the performance needed to handle a full standing load? Fortunately, today's trip didn't test those capabilities, but when it comes to specs, the Euro 6 rated 0500 LEs come with a 7.7 .7 litre turbo diesel engine with 299 horsepower and 1200 newton metres of torque, all delivered through a six speed ZF auto. While far from fast, it made for fairly smooth acceleration, which is probably more important for route bus service applications. Let's have a quick listen now.
Anyway, if speed is really your game, Mercedes offers an optional 353 horsepower variant, which is probably better suited for regional operators who need the extra oomph for climbing hills or for intertown slash intercity bus journeys. As a passenger, this bus as configured is perfectly adequate, but I don't necessarily find myself rushing out to go and catch one. And on the whole, I'm more than happy to jump on board a new BYD or Yutong electric bus instead. And if I'm popping my enthusiast hat on, of course, it's probably going to be an older bus model that catches my interest more, like one of the Scania or Volvo chassis Anser Aranas, or maybe a custom coach's CB60. Still, as we are now nearing Lilyfield, it's time to get ready to jump off this bus and out into the wind on an unseasonably cold summer day. Thanks for joining me and I will see you again soon. <laughs> <laughs>